we're going to talk about a guy who used to be a prince, Harry. And Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? Yeah, this is Hoda interviewing um, Prince Harry at the Invictus Games and asking him about his situation, about him living in the U.S., about him wanting to go home. You obviously made a lot of news recently. You came home to the U.K. You saw your grandmother. How was that? It was great. It was really nice to see her. Be able to see her in some element of privacy was 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 nice. I haven't had a chance to go back to the UK uh, for a couple of years, apart from those two times, one to, to for my grandfather's funeral and one for unveiling a statue of my mum. How did it feel being back? Um, being with her? Being with her, it was great. It was it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on she's on great form. We always she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me, and I'm just making sure that she's you know protected and got the, the right people around. Well, her. you you make. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, he's almost a Ricky Gervais character now. Um, some element of privacy, and there's and there's what I will call a social status eye block, uh, which is which came from Chase's idea of somebody who who sh shields their eyes to kind of put that's exactly it to put themselves above uh, everybody else. Some element of privacy, um, and his head moves away from the conflict. So there's clearly this conflict there around the privacy, a reticence on the feelings of being back and then it was great being with her uh lip retractions also uh, right at the end here's the most important thing disdain and contempt for the right people around her if you ever want to see a great image of disdain and contempt it's at the end of this clip chase what do you got on this one yeah, it's a shift to internal dialogue, which is his eyes are moving to indicate that he's rehearsing or going through what he's going to say. And there's hard stress and a mental struggle around the word privacy. You can see it clear as day here, but there's a contempt micro expression on top of that at the privacy topic. And you'll see the, the face like the kind of one sided smile. You'll see that there. And when she says, how did it feel being back with her? We have vocal hesitancy, a shift to internal dialogue, lip compression uh, and retraction, which is when we're withholding opinions or we're kind of holding some information back. There's question repetition. And when he's saying it's so nice to see her, there's a single shoulder shrug, which indicates that we lack typically uh, lack confidence in what we're saying. And I thought he said she's ungrateful. I thought those words came out. You can hear it in the clip. It's crystal clear to me. But when he's saying surrounded by the right people, a strong facial expression of contempt, like Mark was just saying, the appearance of this entire clip is strong emotions around privacy. I don't think the trip went well at all. These are behaviors that are reliable on their own. But when all of them stack up, just like we see here on a single topic, there's a massive increase in the likelihood that someone's being deceptive. And he's hinting that he's concerned that she's surrounded by bad people who are maybe influencing her perceptions in a way that he would like to change. Great. Yeah, I have a little bit different approach on that whole thing, but we all are about negativity around that right people around her let me let me give you one thing if hoda knew what i know or what you know what the four of us know this could have been a different interview because she asked him mm -hmm. a loaded question that basically says what does it feel like to be the person the harry formerly known as a prince and his eyes go down internal conversation he's trying to work through it and she throws him a life ring and when she throws him that life ring and talks about the grandmother then his face lights up and he starts to talk there's contempt for sure when he has that smirk or, and there's actual amusement in his face when he says the right people around her. My guess is that's from some other conversation. That's, he's privy to a conversation where somebody said, well, the right people are around her and you're not the right kind of people or something. There's something in there. It's a reason you see that smirk in his face. But if she'd known that he's going to internal conversation and that's a deep well he's digging into and let him go, we would have gotten a very different conversation. Here. That's what I got. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think this answer was prepared. I think they uh, ahead of time I said, here's what you're going to ask you, because it's lazy and almost monotone and has no emotion whatsoever in it, that first question. And I think he's probably been asked that question about 400 times since he's been back. And at the end of the clip, like you were saying, uh, uh, geez, was it Mark? I don't, know if, I don't know if it was Mark or Chase. Okay, talking about the contempt. That's the, that's the classic ver uh, expression of contempt. And it's one of the seven uh, universal 
uh, expressions that that um, were nailed down by Paul Ekman. Happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, contempt, and disgust. Those are the big seven. And uh, we're, we're going to go to a, into a deep dive on those in Las Vegas at our event here in just a few weeks. You obviously made a lot of news recently. You came home to the UK. You saw your grandmother. How was that? It was great. It was really nice to see her. Be able to see her in some element of privacy was 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 nice. I haven't had a chance to go back to the UK uh, for a couple of years, apart from those two times, one to, to for my grandfather's funeral and one for unveiling a statue of my mum. How did it feel being back, um, being with her? Being with her, it was great. It was it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on she's on great form. We always she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me, and I'm just making sure that she's you know protected and got the, the right people around. Well, her. you you make you make her laugh. That's what she always says. Uh, I, did you do it again? Uh, yes, yeah, I did. Uh, both <laughs> Megan and I had tea with her, so it was it was really nice to catch up with her. And you know, home home for me now is is, is you know for the time being, it's in, it's in the, it's in it's the, in the states. states, and it really and it feels that way as well. Does um, it? Yeah. It is. We've been welcomed with open arms, yeah. um, and it's got such a great community up in Santa Barbara. So, so you feel like good. that's home more for you? Yeah. Is that weird to say? No, but I'm sure it'll become a thing. You're grim. All right, Chase, what do you got? We see his eyes going down left again, which is a shift to talking to himself, rehearsing some lines. They probably went through this a lot. And just going through these lines and, and rehearsing it. And when he's saying it's, it was nice to catch up with her, I think we see an anger expression flash on the face very briefly, in my opinion. And when he's saying, walk, walk with open arms, uh, there's a super stress response. There. It's these big pacifying things on the legs there. You guys can talk about that. But biggest of all, there's a loss of language fluency. The fluency of his normal speech starts going away. It gets more difficult for him to talk. And that happens during deception for some people and just some fidgeting. But it's like she's asking, this is home for you. Weird deviation from his baseline behavior. There's a struggle with saying home for him. And he's saying it's not hard to say, but it needs to become a thing which is meaningless. Like the, the whole ending of that statement is meaningless. So all the avoidant behaviors here suggest that there's a similar situation. The visit was about the opposite of what we're actually hearing. The It's the opposite of all the words that we're hearing. That's all I got there. Scott? All right. Well, that first question about the making the queen laugh, we see his, his tongue jutting around, you know, flapping around the front part of his of his teeth, like circling around there. Quite often we see something like that. We see the teeth bite down on the tongue and that lets you know, or that usually denotes or indicates that person feels like they've gotten away with something. And when they do that, usually the head goes down, that chin goes down to the chest. And it's almost like you're getting it like that, like they're getting away with something. So when he says um, home for me for the time being is the States. You can hear his hands rubbing together. So that's starting that, starting an adapter there. And he's rocking back and forth. And that's another for, uh, form of adapting. And in that sentence, when he says, like you were saying, Chase, now there's, uh, um, when he says now, there's a micro expression, and it could be argued that it's, that's an expression of anger, or it could be uh, pain, but I'd lean toward anger, but it looks more like. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with, with anger on that one. And just after he says states, his grief muscle engages. So I think you're right, Chase. I don't think this went well for him at all in the United in, in the States. Um, and it went, I didn't think, don't think it went well for him at home either or at his old home either. So he says, we've been welcomed with open arms. He runs his hands down both his legs. And this is another self-soothing behavior. And this one's huge. I mean, it's it's really big. So I get the feeling he's starting to re regret the decision he made about separating himself from the um, the family, the royal family. It's starting to dawn on him that he's made a big mistake at this point. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, were it my interview, uh, I would dig into that welcome idea because that's a massive cluster of self-soothing. I'll take you through it in a moment. Were it my interview, though, I wouldn't get to interview him again because, you know, there is clearly a massively sore point on this. Why? So he does do the open arms gesture. Very, very good. But then hands come down, slap on there down the inside of the thighs, down towards the ankle to protect the, 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 
the delicate ankle joint there. We often, we've seen that in other interviews with him when he's talking about subjects which he doesn't really want to go to, touchy subjects, he'll go for his ankle. And then his hands come up and they fig leaf in front of him, in front of his primary sexual characteristics there. It's a huge stress indicator. I'd be right on top of that and I'd go, so Harry, like, tell me a little bit more about this welcome. Like, explain it to me. And I'd get him deep into that. Yeah, I'd never get another interview with him. Greg, what do you got on this one? I, I'm sure he'll never interview with me, but he's a 12-year-old to me. The way he the way he moves is not like, what is he, 35? I have no idea how old he is. You know, I don't keep up with the Royals quite as much. But I don't know how old he is, but this is young boy kind of body language. I mean, this is 12-year-old boys at camp kind of body language for me. Now, I'll also say he does a little bit of brows up in the center in the beginning. We associate that with sorrow, but he's also a ginger and he's in the sun. I know the pain. Trust me. I've, I, there are pictures where I look like eh, my eyes are all scrunched up because of it. Light colored eyes. And so I'll, I'll give him I'll give him an out for that. The, the For the time being, when he says for the time being to me, Scott, that's profound because that's the trigger to everything else that happens. All that adapting, that slamming his legs and that pushing those things down. Now, when we talk about adapters, people call things soothing ma maneuvers, adapters, whatever. But what you're in effect doing is making the unknown known, making the uncomfortable comfortable, because if you do something all the time and it becomes a habit, it comforts you. If you put people in a cage, those things come out even more. Animals do the same. He had a genuine smile at, did you make her laugh? That was good. I think he probably had a great visit with her. I think he's probably feeling some remorse as I look at this. That drop and rub and then all of that stuff is 12-year-old body language for discomfort. We don't know why. We don't have to know why. And then when he says the whole stuff about welcome, that's we see a lot of that clusters of body language. And he does this lips of disappointment kind of thing. And his shoulders go up like, so what am I to do? I think this kind of sums up what we're seeing from him. You make her laugh. That's what she always says. Uh, I, did you do it again? Uh, yes, yeah, I did. Uh, both <laughs> Megan and I had tea with her. So it was, it was really nice to catch up with her. And, you know, home, home for me now is, is, is you know, for the time being, it's in the, it's in the, it's in it's the States. States. And it really, and it feels that way as well. Does um, it? Yeah, it is. We've been welcomed with open arms yeah. um, and it's got such a great community up in Santa Barbara. So, so you feel good. like that's home more for you? Yeah. Is that weird to say? No, but I'm sure it'll become a thing. Your grim? What's the best thing about her? It's really her sense of humor yeah. and her ability to see the, the humor in so many, so many mm -hmm. different things. We, we have a really special relationship. We talk about things that she can't talk about with anybody else. That. Um, so that's always a, a nice piece to it. But I think she's, I think after a certain age, you get bored of birthdays. You do? You think she's bored of her 96? She won't so. be bored of the Jubilee, will she? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> she's, had a, she's had a few Jubilees now. So everyone's slightly, yeah. every, everyone is slightly different. But yeah. I think she, I'm sure she's looking Do you think to you'll come? I don't know yet. There's lots of things with security uh, issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do, trying to make it possible that, you know, that I can get my kids to meet her. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I just have a few things. The brow tips are up again. This is a ginger in the sun. That's what it is. I can see it now because he's softening the impact on his eyes. Uh, he genuinely is happy in this. You can see his face engaging until he gets to this point about whether he will or will not come back. You can see that. And there's internal dialogue going on there as he figures out what he should say. I'm sure there's probably the party line. There's probably the line his brother or whoever the handlers have told him. Mark, I have a note right here that says, not overly sophisticated in his body language and messaging. Could use the work of Mark Bowden. <laughs> so if you're listening, Harry, and you need a coach, we know one that lives really close to you. You might want to call. Um, but then I see when he's talking about the effort required to get his children to his grandmother, there's absolute disdain there. There's disgust. There's all that lower face, all that disdain around the, the hurdles he has to go through to get these kids to the, to the grandmother. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, I love this one. She can't talk about with anybody else. Stuff she can't talk about with anybody else. Listen to that else. There's massive vocal fry on that. It is so different. I'm going to say he's being utterly deceptive about she talks to him about stuff that she can't talk to anybody else about because of that vocal fry. It is so different. And then he goes, uh, so that's always a nice piece to it, but... 
Like, that means nothing. It's so unspecific. I would dig into that and I would go, well, specifically, I mean, I know you can't talk about your private conversations with Her Majesty, but give us the generalized area that she talks about with you that she cannot talk to anybody else. I would imagine he would be instantly in trouble uh, on that. Too unspecific. He's playing this idea of, of confident status against the right people. It's a status play throughout this. Chase, I managed to get in the word status for you there, but what do you got on this one? Thank you. Always appreciate a little status. These facial expressions from Hoda are bizarre, I think. I've never seen people make those facial expressions before in this interview, but let's talk about Harry. What is she saying? Or Harry says, talk about things that we can't talk about with anyone else. Mark, I totally agree with you. I think this whole thing suggests some kind of special access and privilege that no one else uh, that no one else has. Implies maybe an element of trust above all the other children. Or says uh, that's always a nice piece to it. Meaningless, hollow language there. But when he's saying, "I get my kids to meet her right at the very end," there's a little bit of contempt, just kind of contempt on the face. All the behavior that we're seeing here in this little clip is showing a very difficult time, I think, coping with the loss of security and maybe a need to assert a degree of specialness because he's lost some kind of specialness, which I think he feels is now gone from his life. His behavioral response to the topic of security specifically suggests more than just physical protection and may lead to something deeper in terms of security that he feels is lacking in his life. I'm not going to go to pop psychology. I already did. So, uh, Scott, what do you yeah, got? I, th I think you nailed it, though, man. He's 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 just struggling for relevance at this point because all he talks about is how how important he is. They need security, and he talks to the queen like nobody else, and she talks to him like this is it, it's 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 over. It's done. When he went home, and he saw his, heard those people booing. So I think that's what's happened. Just just a struggle, just grasping his straws to be relevant at this point. What's the best thing about her? It's really her sense of humor yeah. and her ability to see the the humor in so many so many mm -hmm. different things. We we have a really special relationship. We talk about things that she can't talk about with anybody else. I love that. Um, so that's always a, a nice piece to it. But I think she's. I think after a certain age, you get bored of birthdays. You do? You think she's bored of her 96? She won't so. be bored of the Jubilee, will she? Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> she's, had a, she's had a few Jubilees now, so I mean, everyone's slightly, yeah. every, everyone is slightly different. But yeah. I think she, I'm sure she's looking Do you think to you'll come? I don't know yet. There's lots of things with security uh, issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do, trying to make it possible that you know I can get my kids to meet her. All right. Thanks. This is a good one, fellas, and we'll see you next yeah. time. Yeah, I don't know why I guess I don't know if it's still